Today we are working on a DIY paper crafting project. This is a home decor keepsake. We'll be focusing on using product from enablecase.com. So let's get started. What I've got here as my base, this is a nine by nine unfinished wood piece I picked up at Hobby Lobby. And of course I picked it up because I love that slat board look. And I'm gonna be painting the front, back, and in between all the slats, of course, with this Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color Drop Cloth, which is just basically a nice off-white shade. Once that's all complete, I'm, the papers I'll be using for my supply today is this kind of script paper and this kind of distressed wash aqua shade and a little mini dot pattern uh, shade, of course, all in the colors of these aquas that look really nice all together. So with the script pattern, I actually want to cut the individual board pieces with this paper. And I'm cutting the paper about oh an eighth of an inch short all the way around because I want to see a little bit of the actual slat board around the perimeters of the papers. Make sure they all fit nicely here. Love this. And then once that's all complete I'm taking this kind of distressed wash piece and I'm going to cut it down just to kind of fit the center a little bit, but you can still see the slat boards around the perimeter. And in this mini dot pattern, I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, um, I'll be cutting that just a little bit smaller to fit kind of the inside of that distressed wash paper. Now, those of you that know me, you could probably do this voiceover by heart right now. I'm taking the open end of my scissor blades and I'm distressing all the edges of the uh, bottom papers here. I don't distress all the little ephemera cards and stuff I'll be using later, but of course, distressing these pieces, I just kind of scrape it along the edges of all the papers just to kind of make it look a little bit uh, you know, worn and used and distressed. I love to do this to add texture. How many of you can say this by heart? <laughs> See how well that looks? I just love that look. And then of course, once all that is finished, you know what I'm doing next. I'm taking it to my sewing machine and I will sew around the perimeter of all these pieces of paper. I think this also gives it a distressed look and lots of texture for our background. Just going to sew one little piece here and show you what it looks like so in case you are new to my channel. And there's how it looks. Very nice. Be using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here today and then I will just start gluing down all my papers. This is a double-sided paper, as you can see, because obviously you're looking at the back sides, but that's okay. I like this side better, so that's the side we're going to be using. Obviously, because I'm gluing it down, so there's no going back. I kind of love that, love that, love that, love that about double-sided paper, because you can choose which side you want to use. Got that down. gluing my larger piece down here. This one is kind of hard to decide because I do kind of love the brown tone on the other side, but luckily I have quite a few sheets of this. I've got this really cool kind of ephemera acetate piece. I got these at uh, Tuesday morning and I'm just kind of gluing this in the background. I've got some pieces that are, you know, bold in color and uh, so I want to put this as part of the decoration to tie in the other uh, darker colors of uh, ephemera and things that I'll be using on this project today. I want to get that down first since it goes behind the one paper and then we're going to glue down this last piece here. I'm going to be doing some stenciling. I like to use my 3D matte gel from Prima Marketing uh, Company and this is a stencil I've cut apart because I the other part of the stencil I don't really like to use as much. I like to use kind of the micro dot texture here and I'm using the matte gel because when it dries it's going to be matte color of course and transparent. 
so it's not going to really shine you can see it here a little bit it's not going to really shine in the background it's just going to look really subtle versus if you use like a, a modeling paste or something like that that's really white in color or if you use a modeling paste or matte gel and you add color to it I don't want that I just want it nice and subtle for texture in the background I'm picking three areas here on my papers to kind of do the stenciling uh, in like a little triangular pattern. Once the stenciling is done here, I think it looks great, nice and subtle in the background, but giving us that little bit of texture that I'm looking for. I'm going to be using quite a few little ephemera tags and paper tags and things on this project today as my embellishments. You can find these in any kind of paper craft sections at, you know, uh, local uh, craft stores. I'm going to be bringing in my first Rene Bouquet piece. This is Beautiful Board Laser Cut Chipboard. This is an ATC tag set. It's called Tree of Life, a double layer design. I'm going to be just kind of using the decorative part of the tag set here. I'm going to layer it right over this other little paper tag. And then now this is another little acetate circle. I picked these up at Michael's years ago. As you can see how dark it is, now you know why I use that little other kind of darker acetate piece at the top early on. Uh, so it will kind of tie in with that. Bringing in another uh, Rene K Beautiful Board Laser Cut Chipboard ATC tag, the little sweetheart tag here. I'm actually going to cover up the heart area um, because I just really need the other edge of it, but still works beautifully. And then I'm going to layer down a few more tags here. Just kind of seeing where I want it to go. Using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue today for my project as usual. And I'm kind of layering everything here because this is going to be like the main focal area where it's going to house my photo I'm going to be using. Now this is some cardboard. I've got about four layers deep of cardboard I'm going to be gluing together here. This is just to layer up my photo because coming in pretty soon uh, is an embellishment I'm going to be using that's pretty thick looking so I have to layer up cardboard so that my photo will uh, lay level across this other embellishment. So this is a Rene K silver pocket watch cabochon I'm going to be using today. I love to use these in my projects. So just making sure it's going to fit right in the area and I'm going to glue down this ensemble of cardboard first. I know it looks funny but it will get covered up. go and then we're going to glue down this cabochon here and these pocket watches Renee does have them in two different colors so I've got Rene Bouquet Beautiful Board Laser Cut Chipboard. This is chain link frames. They're actually in a set of three. I just have two here to show you. This is the photo I'm going to be using today. And I'm going to use the medium frame out of the set to go around my photo. So I'm just checking position for a minute. Now I'm bringing in these straws. And I know that sounds kind of weird to use in an embellishment, but it's really kind of cool when you're working with paper crafting because it does provide, again, more texture any kind of texture is really fun and so those are pretty tall so that's why I had to kind of level up all those cardboard pieces just adding in some lace from my supply before I glue down this second straw here and as you see I've got the straws really tall up and down to kind of offset all the embellishments I have in the upper right corner how tall it is and then I'll have some embellishments kind of coming down the frame as well and I want them all to look cohesive together so here's our navel Kate beautiful board laser cut chipboard these are Victorian scroll borders I'm using a medium size and I actually just took it and cut it in half because I want to again kind of glue half at one end and half at the other end to simulate the length of the straws to make everything come together and look balanced. I do a lot of layering when I work with these paper crafting projects. It's just always been my style. I'm going to go ahead and glue on the photo now. This is a photo of my niece. I have used her before in Renee Bouquet, uh 
projects in the past, I'll make sure I link those down below in the description box in case you missed them. So this is a resin frame by Prima Marketing. You can get all sorts of resin pieces and things like that at local craft stores. Renee does have resin pieces in her shop. This is Renee Bouquet Beautiful Board Laser Cut Chipboard. These are beautiful words called Love and it's in the medium size. They are, all the beautiful board from Renee Bouquet is about the thickness of a nickel, but I want this one to actually be even thicker than that. So I'm taking two of these love words and I'm gluing them together. Now the glue in this bottle is the Fabri-Tac. It's just a bottle with a finer uh, needle. So needle nose, I guess to say, so less glue comes out. And I'm gluing both of those together, like I said, to make it nice and really, really thick because I want it to be really sturdy because it's gonna actually hang off of an element later on. So this is just a little uh, metal plate from my supply. I again have had it for years and you can see how dark that is. So that is gonna tie in with both of those other darker acetate circles. So here are Renee Bouquet flowers. This is sea foam and white mini dusty teal and itty bitty blossoms. This is a Renee Bouquet tiny treasure butterfly. They are called Ice Fairy and come in a package of four for mixed colors. This is the mint green out of the set or was because now we're gluing flowers. And do not worry, I will have all the links down below to all the product from Renee Bouquet's that I used on this project today. So you can find them very quickly if there's something that really interests you and you'd love to work with them. So now I'm just gonna be working with all the different flowers I mentioned and layering them across the left and right side of our project today. I love these itty bitty flowers. I'm just curling the stem around the uh, paintbrush. I'm gonna keep that stem on just to add a little texture. It's all about texture. And as you can see, I kept my photo uh, black and white so that I could use these nice uh, aqua tones on the project today. I used a larger photo uh, for this project so that it would not get lost amidst all the color. So that's something to think about when you're designing. Because when you look at a project, the first thing that you want to see is that photo. Now, of course, the way it's positioned on the video right now, the first thing you're noticing is that little U metal plate. But when you look at the project as a whole, you will your eyes should go directly right to that photo. So that's something to think about when you're placing all your embellishments and you're using photos for, you know, home decor keepsakes. This is just another little metal or a resin uh, piece, a little butterfly. This is a little zipper pull. These are old. I don't even know if you can find them anymore by Prima Marketing. I still have a few left. It says precious. I'm just adding it in. I love the movement of it. And now we're coming along the right side, placing a little bit more flowers so it looks cohesive uh, on the left side as well. Again, the same flowers I showed you earlier. Just a few on this side because I want to make sure a little bit of that uh, Renee Bouquet uh, pocket watch cabochon shows. Just about done with the flowers. We'll add one itty bitty blossom left here. Again, those are in the sea foam color. And now I'm going to be the itty bitty blossoms. Now I'm going to be adding this double layered love word that we glued together. You're going to see why I want it nice and thick. I'm just hanging it right off the edge of that U. So I want it really, really sturdy. Not that beautiful board isn't thick because as I said, it's the thickness of a nickel, but I wanted it double thick. And now I'm going to be laying down this uh, tiny treasure butterfly. This is a little sticker from Tim Holtz. It is, um, I just wanted to add a little bit of kind of journaling to this project so that it ties in with the rest of the words, you know, the love you at the bottom. And it is really thin, of course, it's a sticker. So I'm adding it to some cardboard to give it a little bit more strength. I'm gonna kind of roughen up the edges with these scissor blades like I did on the paper earlier. And then I'm gonna glue it down in the upper right corner on that Tree of Life frame, just to draw your eye upward a little bit. 
And then this is a Woodward from my stash. It says today, and I'm going to be gluing that right down at the bottom. Just almost done with this project, tying everything in. I love, love, love how this came out. I often use my Nissan projects just because she is so dang cute and she takes the cutest photos as you can see here. So I guess she's my muse for, for quite a few projects. Now we're going to be adding a little more texture. I'm bringing in back the 3D matte gel, this glitter glass from Enable Ks. It's Gaudy Girl Chunky Glitter Glass in the color Ocean. And these are some sequins and little uh, fake diamonds. I know it's pinks and stuff in here, but what I did, I'll show you here in just a second, is I kind of pulled out all the white shades. I'm going to add some of this on the project as well for texture. So what I do, I've got a little drip pan down below. I take a paintbrush, I dip it into the 3D matte gel, and then I pour my glitter glass on top in all the areas I want it to be. I will usually apply this in a triangular area. So you see I've got it in the right and left, and now I'm going up to the top. And then once I've poured on all the glitter glass I want, I'll take this, turn it over, and dump and tap off the excess so the uh, glitter glass gets dumped off and then I can pour that from the drip pan back into my jar so none goes to waste. Now when I'm doing these little sequins and gems, I have a smaller paintbrush and I actually have to paint on the 3D matte gel here. You could use glue, regular glue, um, like uh, Fabri-Tac, you know, make sure it's a glue that dries clear uh, when you're using glitter glass or sequins or anything like that because you know you don't want to see like white glue underneath things like this. You can see how cute that looks with the sequins and the gems and the glitter glass. And here is our final project. I hope you enjoyed everything we've done today. Please leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you feel about this project. What's your favorite part? The colors, the picture, all the product, of course, I use from Renee Bouquets. And again, I will have all those links down below so you can go check out uh, any of the product I use. I will have all the links to everything Renee Bouquets, you know, Pinterest, Facebook, the blog. You can see other designers' artwork, the Facebook uh, Renee Bouquet Artist with an Edge group where other artists around the world enjoy showing their projects that they have done using Renee Bouquet product. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.